Hello, my name is Roy and welcome to Cross Cultural Adventures. In the episode last week, we explored the influence of cultural value orientations on the extent of possible culture shock. This week, we will focus on homesickness that is one of the potentially most debilitating consequences of culture shock. Finally, we will also link this back to the CVO patterns discussed last week. So first, what is homesickness? Homesickness is one of the most debilitating and disruptive consequences of culture shock to the extent that a small number of people eventually find that the only possible response for them is to sadly return home before completing their personal overseas experience. However, at the outset, it's important to note that, for example, an informed estimate is that around 70% that includes domestic and overseas students, experience some initial feeling of homesickness. So here it needs to be stressed and understood that there's nothing unusual about this experience, and it doesn't indicate that an individual has a lasting personal problem. To some extent, a degree of homesickness the initial encounter with a new culture could be seen as just being, well, that's normal. Then, either studying or working overseas is often the first experience of leaving the family home and, at the same time, living in a new and unfamiliar cultural context. This represents a huge event in the life of most people. Another issue is that the expectations in terms of personal and career development arising from the opportunity to study or work overseas are typically set at a very high level, sometimes indeed to an unrealistic extent. Consequently, for the individual, it can be difficult to express any negative feelings towards the experience, such as in the case of homesickness. Then, the severity of homesickness can vary with the extent of the contrast between the home and host pattern of cultural value orientations that we discussed in the last pod episode. For example, people moving between the Western European egalitarian or intellectual autonomy and Anglo-effective autonomy cultures will typically experience minimum levels of homesickness as many of the values are shared. The same applies to those transferring between embedded and hierarchical cultures, where again, many of the cultural values are shared. However, where people move to the Anglo-effective autonomy cultures from, say, embedded or hierarchical contexts, the possibility of more intense feelings of homesickness can arise. This can also be compounded, increased, by the additional practical issue of the fear of of the actual distance between such nations that can trigger a sense for some people of being trapped and unable to return home for some considerable time. So let's now examine some of the common 
negative effects of homesickness. First, the emotional or psychological effects. These include a sense of sadness, anxiety, and loneliness. And because we are meant to be enjoying the experience, it can cause a feeling of low esteem that can trigger panic attacks. In extreme cases, this can include clinical depression. Next, there are physical effects. This can include disturbed sleep patterns, headaches, a loss of appetite, or even a feeling of nausea. After this, there are academic or work performance effects. And these include a lack of concentration, problems with time management, and being able to effectively communicate with peers, teachers, or colleagues. And finally, the social effects. Homesickness can produce a feeling of isolation or withdrawal that can disrupt relationships or any engagement in social activities. We just feel like we want to be left alone. So, okay, that's the bad news. So let's move on more positively now to conclude with some of the simple actions that can limit this experience of homesickness. First, we've got to accept that homesickness is a natural feeling and it will pass given time and effort. Two, we must stop comparing things with those at home. This doesn't help. Number three, try to learn to become a researcher of the new culture rather than a critic. Four, make sure you bring some items from home, sometimes called home comforts with you, to remind you of home and to reduce that feeling of being too separated from your previous life. Five, now it's very important to try to identify one positive new experience in the host culture every day might be food, it might be architecture, it might be a relationship. There's got to be something. Be positive. Six, in general, try to keep busy. Then seven, make sure you contact friends and family at home, but not too often or you'll become too dependent on that relationship. Eight, remind yourself of the important reasons why you came here in the first place. Reasons connected with personal development, career enhancement. You didn't come for no reason at all. So again, it's worth repeating. Remind yourself of the important reasons why you are here. Number nine, then avoid, avoid isolating yourselves with just people from your home country culture. Of course you should mix and talk with people from the home culture, but your job is also to break out from that familiar ground and learn to mix and form relationships with people in the host culture. 
To do this, consider joining a few extracurricular or social activities where you're almost bound to meet people from the host culture and learn to communicate and integrate. After this, number 11, you've got to learn to stick at it. And again, remember, things will get better. And this personality trait of stickability will be very important to you in the future, in your future life and future careers. It shows you have a strong character. You don't give in easy. Don't isolate yourself, number 12, by locking yourself away and staying for long periods of time on social media. That doesn't help. You can't hide from the experience. You've got to manage it. 13. Don't compare yourself with other people. Some people find integrating into a new culture much easier than others. That's no problem. You've got to go at your own pace. Then, 14, very important, establish a daily routine, either for your study or for your work performance. Routine creates comfort. Additional point 15, try to get up early and go to bed early. Avoid these miserable, depressing, late-night isolation feelings. It doesn't help to brood and think over things that you can't change anyway. 16. Learn to cook things you like and invite your friends to dinner with you. This could mean learning to cook some of the local food, which can be interesting and funny. Not always successful, of course. And remember to invite people from the host community too. And you'll make friends. Number 17. Decorate your room to make it feel like your comfortable and safe place. And this will include adding items and pictures from home to remind you that you're not that separated and that you actually will be going home soon. 18. Look after yourself physically. Sleeping, eating, light exercise. So, 19, if you are experiencing homesickness, don't feel shy or intimidated about expressing these feelings. For example, members of your home community that have been settled in the host culture for some time can provide useful tips on how they manage the experience. In addition, members of the host community will be able to offer practical help on how to adjust to your new cultural context. Talking about problems really does help. While people will think of you as being open and brave rather than weak or stupid. But finally, and here's a big point, if you think that things are getting really bad and you're feeling really, really down, seek professional counselling support. Universities always have counsellors and many employers employ these people too. Never be too shy to seek support. So there. In the episode next week, we'll conclude our short exploration of culture shock by focusing on what is called timetable shock. Experience, 
experienced by students studying overseas, and the subsequent challenge of developing self-directed learning skills. Thanks for listening. Hope you tune in next week, and goodbye.